Hey gang, welcome back. Today I'd like to show you another extremely useful tester for electricians, automotive technicians, as well as hobbyists. This product, like other testers shown on my channel, has high buyer satisfaction ratings. A link to this product, along with a money-saving coupon code, has been placed in the video description area. This tester is made by Unit, a company which makes many different types of quality testers. I also show a Mega made by this company on my channel. You'll see that video shown at the end of this video. Now you can purchase current measuring clamp meters at your local home improvement or hardware store, but those testers are only designed to measure AC and their level of accuracy isn't that high compared to this unit. This unit here is designed to measure not only alternating current, but direct current as well. Now the specifications for this unit, four digit LCD display, it measures alternating current, 45 hertz up to 200 hertz, up to 60 amps of current in one milliamp increments, which is fantastic because other ones that you purchase in a store which don't even measure direct current do not have one milliamp increments. There's a zero adjustment knob, which also eliminates residual magnetism inside this laminated iron area, which surrounds the wire. You adjust this knob here, which I'll show you in a minute. Designed for use up to 600 volts, and it has auto off in five minutes. Sample rate for this unit is two times per second. Working current, 10 milliamps, and it's operated using a nine volt battery. You can also store data inside this unit and access it using an interface cable, which was included with software. The dimensions are 168 millimeters by 65 millimeters, by 34 millimeters thick. Okay, let's open it up, take a look at the unit. Everything you see here was inside the box. Nice padded case, right here, zipper case. One year product warranty card. You have the software, as well as the RS-232 to mini USB that allows you to access the data stored inside this unit using the software. In this video, I will not be showing the software it's fairly straightforward if you have Windows. I'm not too sure if you could use it with Mac, but I know it's for use with Windows operating system. And you don't have to have an RS-232 on your computer. You can also use USB to the USB Mini to plug into this unit. Now let's take a closer look at the tester itself. Over here, CAT3, 600 volt. There's your display. Off. DC or AC, switch it on, and you can see it's minus 50 milliamps, so before using the unit, you would have to zero it out using this right here. Keep turning it slowly, and you're right around zero. Keep in mind, you don't have to have this exact. You could also have it showing 5 or 10, and then you would just add or subtract that amount from the reading. But right now, for all practical purposes, it's at zero milliamps, DC, there's AC, then you could do hold, that's data hold, and it says zero two. So now that reading has been stored to access by your computer later on. It's number two, that's one milliamp. And you can put this back to there. Let's go back. Let's put it to here for a second, Just throw it out. That's 20 milliamps, and we'll hit the hold again. And now you can see it says number three. So later on, if you want, you could write down each time that you did a test, and you could refer to that number on your computer to see what the readings were. So let's push the hold button, and let's zero it. Okay, so it's zero. Put it off for a minute. Closer look at it. Over here, USB gets plugged in. Strap. Zero button. Right over here is your 9 volt battery. AC, DC, 0 milliamps up to 60 amps. And you can see the laminated iron core 
that the wire is going to go inside of to take the reading. You're going to place the positive wire in here when doing DC current measurements and when you're measuring alternating current you would place the hot wire inside the clamp. Now before I show you a couple of uses that I would use this tester for, let me first hook up a lead acid battery to a 12 volt 20 watt halogen lamp and we're going to measure the current to show you how well this works. Now ordinarily what you would do is you would take a digital multimeter and you would connect the probes in series with one of the leads in order to measure the current. The current would have to flow through your digital multimeter to give you that reading. The beauty with this, no need to cut into the wire. Simply clamp it right around the wire like that. And you're going to turn on the unit. Let me flip this around so it's easier to see. Now I'm going to connect up the bulb and you're going to see how much current is flowing through that wire. The more current that flows through that wire, you're going to have a stronger field around that wire, which is going to show a higher current. Here we go. And you can see 1.84 amps. Now the reason why you see 43 milliamps remaining after the testing is done, there's some residual magnetism left inside that laminated iron core. So before the next reading, all you have to do is just zero it out. All right, so you're pretty good right there. And we'll just give it another test. There you go. And 1.8. Keep in mind, this is a very heavy load for this very tiny battery. So the current probably dropped just a little bit due to the voltage drop on the battery. So that's pretty good. Now I'm going to turn this off. Let me show you two great uses for this tester. Okay, let me show you the first thing that this comes in extremely, extremely handy for. Now I have uploaded a video in the past showing how to find a parasitic drain on your vehicle. If your battery goes dead overnight, I show you exactly how to find out what the problem is. In that video, I used an ordinary digital multimeter using the current setting. And what I do is I actually disconnect the clamp from the battery and you connect the digital multimeter in series and you can watch each thing that you unplug from the fuse box until you see the current drop to a normal level. The only bad thing about doing that, if you have a computer, it's going to reset the computer. The car is going to have to relearn a lot of things. So it's really not a good thing to be disconnecting the battery. You may also have a sound system that you'll have to enter the code back into in order to use it. This right here eliminates all those problems. And it also allows you to pinpoint a lot easier where the parasitic drain is coming from because usually the clamp is tied to more than one positive cable. Leaving one here goes to the fuse box one goes to the alternator, and there's another one going somewhere else. So this will allow me to check each one of those outputs coming off the positive to tell me where the drain is coming from. You should only see 25 to maybe 40 milliamps of current when everything is working properly. Make sure there's no hood light on. If the light for the hood is on, this could be as high as 200 milliamps throwing off the test. So let me show you how it works. Okay, we're set for zero milliamps. There's three wires. We'll try one at a time. Nothing on that one. There's one a little lower, right over here, which is actually a pain in the neck to get to, but let me try it. And as you can see, it's still the minus zero, no current. And there's one more wire over here. Let me put it upside down again. clamp it right here and right there you could see 32 milliamps 30 to 32 and that's good that's between the 25 and 40 milliamp drain if this was showing 200 then you know that the wire to the alternator no problem you'd know that this wire 
going wherever that's going is not a problem. But the problem is going to be coming from that fuse box. You would pull one fuse at a time until you see that current level drop to the normal range. It's as simple as that. Let me show you one other way you can use this. If you're an electrician, then this has two great uses. The first one, you can measure the current flowing through these wires out of each one of the breakers. If you have a breaker that's tripping all the time, you may think there's too much current flowing through the wire causing it to trip, so you can measure it. If the current is lower than the breaker rating, then you're going to know that the breaker is more than likely faulty. This does go up to 60 amps, and the average residential panel usually has breakers that go as high as 60 amps, which are used for ranges as well as heating systems. The good thing about this tester, because it measures in one milliamp increments, you can check for leakage on each one of these wires. Now, if there's no load connected to the circuit breaker, that means there should be no current flowing through this wire. If there's a problem where there's a possible leakage of current flowing from this hot wire to ground, possibly due to moisture somewhere in the branch circuit, then you could use this device because it measures down to one milliamp increments, clamp it onto that wire, and then you should see no current flowing. Now in this case, let me push the hold button. There's 519 milliamps flowing through that line. So let's push this button again. Eh, that's close enough. That's good. Let's try this blue one. And let's hit hold because you can't see it. Open it up. And that one has 10.8 amps of current flowing. And you can see it saved it as number 6, hopefully. So when this is accessed using your computer, you'll be able to pull all of these up. If you have a problem with a GFCI circuit where it's tripping and there's a small amount of current causing it to trip, you'll be able to detect that using this tester. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.